Hi, welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be painting with acrylic paints, doing one of my most famous uh, styles of painting that I'm totally hooked onto right now, and that's mandala in. So I'm going to show you how to create a fish mandala. This is an original design of mine. I first did on this rock. You can see he's a little bit too big for the rock, so I'm like, oh, I need to do another one and make him a little smaller. So then I came up with two different sizes. You're going to learn both of those sizes today. I'm going to show you the smaller size on a rock, step by step. And I'm also going to show you how to do a larger one. Here's the big guy. I'm going to show you how to finish him off on my plastic craft. Thank you for my craft, Peggy. You maybe don't recognize it now. It used to be silver. And then Peggy kindly donated it to the cause here at Let's Paint with Sharon. So you might notice there's also some other small fish that are already finished on the craft. I had so much fun doing them. It's so relaxing. And you can switch your colors up. All of these designs you're seeing today are all done with the same set of colors. Now if you're not getting too good of a view of these guys, or if I'm going too fast, don't worry because there's a pattern packet available. The pattern packet includes all the five fish on the carafe, as well as these three other fish that I'm going to be finishing off and working on with you today for this class. And the pattern packet is going to include step-by-step -step photos of how to start and finish those. They Right now I'm at about 260 photos. So it's very step-by-step. -step. So if you've never painted before, you will have no problem recreating these. And you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. And if you are a painter and you have done painting before, this is a cute little design that would be great for a gift. And I can't wait to put my uh, rocks in the garden. And I can't wait to use my carafe. How fun is that? And I think the most fun is just like running your hand over it. Because the bumpiness, it just feels so nice. Call me crazy. So we're going to be using acrylic paints today. We're using the DecoArt multi-surface satin paints in Blue Lagoon, School Bus, and in Black Tie, as well as the multi-surface satins in Neon, Green, Orange, and Pink. And we're going to use a couple of the metallic multi-surface in Turquoise and Gold. So the Turquoise I used to base coat my craft. In the pattern packet it shows you step by step of what the craft looked like because originally it was a, it's, a, it's a plastic surface and it was originally like a silvery color but now it's this nice turquoise, nice and shiny turquoise. So it's nice to see I think the steps as things come together because if you would see what the first coat on that looked like, super patchy. Second coat, super patchy. I think it took me seven coats to get that nice and solid probably five and then I put like an extra two on for good measure and then we're going to use the gold on the rocks just for a nice little shimmer I love the metallics getting either metallics or glitter in my projects is my favorite and um, the reason I chose the multi-surface decor Americana satin paints too um, they're one of their newer brands that's come out in the past couple of years but the great thing with them is they have the sealer and varnish already in the paint so you do not have to seal your project before you start painting on it and you don't have to varnish when you're done and it's good for keeping your projects indoors or you can put them outdoors like I'm going to do my rocks and you just like the name suggests you can use them on a variety of surfaces like wood, fabric, metal, most plastics, paper mache, canvases, terracotta, even glass. Here's uh, my drinking glass, one of my favorites. Dina, thank you for cricketing my unicorn. And then I did a little mandala design around it. So I did the mandala design first, and then when you use the multi-surface satins on glass, you bake it in the oven. So you bake it in the oven for like a half an hour. You put them in the oven with the oven off. Then you turn the oven up to, I think it's 275, but it'll tell you on the bottle. Then you bake them for half an hour. Let them cool down while they're still in the oven. Just open the door a bit. Let them cool down, and then you're good to go. They're supposed to be dishwasher safe at that point, but I like to hand wash mine because I like to treat them with respect and care. Now, the fish rock you cannot put in the oven, so anything that you're painting that is not glass, they just take seven days to cure, and curing means that they, meet, they reach their full strength. So once you've hit seven days, they're good to go outside or just to use regularly. Yeah, good stuff. I love these paints. So nice. So, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do 
Well, if you're painting a rock, just find yourself a rock that's relatively smooth. This guy's got a few bumps in him. Not too bad. So you can find smoother ones too. And then you want to get your little kitchen scrubby and at the kitchen sink you just want to put a little bit of soap on the scrubby side and scrubby them down with a little soap then rinse them off and then dry them. To dry them I usually just pop them under the blow dryer. And then he's all washed and ready to go. Now what we want to do is shake up our gold. So this is the Decoir Americana Multi-Surface Satin Gold Metallic. I like to use the plastic lids to put my paint on. Um, there are things some of you might be aware of, like the wet palettes that you can use to put your, your acrylic paints on. I prefer not to use the wet palettes or a homemade wet palette for the multi-surface paints because I don't want to dilute them. I want to keep them full strength. So I just take a little bit out at a time. About the size of a loony if you're Canadian. And then you can either use a foam brush. This is a one inch foam brush. It's got a beveled edge. So it's got a little triangle there. If you're using these guys, try and load just past the bevel. So you've got your little triangle there. And then right in here is where you want to load your paint. And that's where you want to press down when you're loading and base coating your surface. I don't use the tip like this because it bends the top half and that wears out faster. But when it does wear out, you can pull this off and there's like a little plastic thing underneath and then you can use it as a palette knife so you can still keep getting some life out of it. But preferably, I like to use a flat brush. This is about a one inch flat brush, and this is about, this is a, just a larger one inch flat brush. Well, this could be a three quarter. I may have accidentally lied. <laughs> so I just use one that's old, and by old, I mean that there's paint that's gotten up the ferrule, and the ferrule is this metal part here. It's called the ferrule on a brush. So your paint gets built up just above there, just from lack of cleaning, or the paint just gets up there so much it's hard to get it all out. So I use these old ones for doing base coating like this because it doesn't matter if I get too much paint up the ferrule and if that paint builds up because it's not a brush that's in really excellent condition. Okay, so I'm going to use this guy. I have soaked him in my brush tub for a couple of minutes just so he's nice and wet and then I take out my extra water on my paper towel just by dabbing like this. You can't take out too much water, but get out all the excess. And then I'm just going to load from the edge of my puddle. I don't want the paint to come up past halfway. I want to try and keep the paint from getting close to that ferrule because then I don't have to spend as much time later cleaning it out and it'll also help keep the paint from getting up the ferrule which will help my brush last longer. Later on though I will be showing you how to use this brush tub. It's a commercial brush tub. I'll also show you how to use like a little uh, plastic basin if that's what you have at home and I'll also be covering how to get the paint out of your bristles using the Deco Magic brush cleaner. And with the Master's Brush Cleaner, I'm going to show you how to help preserve your, and condition your brushes. Okay, so let's start base coating. Let me bring you in a little closer here, kids. There we go. So with the first coat, I like to get in all the little nooks and crannies of the canvas. Oh, the canvas, whether you're painting on a canvas or on a rock. Canvases can be pretty bumpy too, depending on the brand or the quality of the canvas. What I'm doing is basically putting on the paint a little thicker, so it's really kind of blobby, and then I spread that around so it gets in all the thick parts. And then when my brush is pretty empty, I take that thick paint and just move it around to thin it out. I don't want it to be really thick, thick on here, because I'm going to do about, oh, about five coats to get it solid. And I want to carry the paint around the sides. I, you can see I'm working on like a little folded placemat because that makes it really easy to turn your uh, surface around, whether it's a rock or a wood piece or a terracotta. Makes it easy to turn around and you don't have to lift it or get paint on you. Now, if you do get paint on you, the nice thing with the acrylic paints is they're water based, so the paint will just wash right off you. If you happen to get some on your clothing, if you wash it out that day, it's really, it usually comes off pretty good. You notice I just take a little bit of paint out at a time because that way I can go through it without it drying up. If I had some left over on my little lid and it wasn't drying at all, I could just pop it back in my container and it would be good. So for the first side, 
of my rock. I take that paint down as far as I can. If I can see brush strokes, like little lines in my strokes when I'm brushing, that means I have a little bit extra paint on there. So when my brush is a little emptier, I can just brush over that paint that I can see my brush stroke lines in and just smooth it out a bit. And your empty brush will move that around. The metallics are so pretty. They'll give you such a nice little shimmer in the garden. I just love them. And I love this fish design. I can't wait. I already have like two more sets of colors. Um, like here's like one set of your colors that we're using for this design on the fish. But you could have like so many different other selected colors that you could use to create fish uh, of different colors. So I'm gonna, I've got another one that I want to do that's like blue at the front of the fish going into pinks and oranges at the back. I mean the color combinations are endless. Uh, and if you order one of the pattern packets, you'll see my little reference photo fish that I found online. Um, the, rep, the photo fish I used for reference is just like a little tropical fish that I found online and he inspired me for these colors. So now that I've got that one side done, I'll see if I have any thicker areas of paint, smooth out anything that's a little bit ridgy. And then for my brush, I just want to pinch him out in a piece of paper towel to get rid of the extra paint. And then I usually go and wash these bigger brushes out of the sink because they hold a lot of paint. In lieu of that, I'm just going to tap, tap, tap in the bottom of my brush basin. So when you're using these little brush basins, this is how you use them. So this was just like, um, you know, you can use cottage cheese containers that you might have at home. I just tap in the bottom on an angle. So I'm, uh, on your uh, ferrule here, you've got one, one corner and two corners. You want to tap in one corner and then tap, 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 working your way over to the other corner as you're on the bottom of your little lid. And that's going to help shoot the paint up your ferrule. That's that middle part that holds your bristles. And that tapping will help shoot the paint, the water up there, pardon me, to help get your paint out. So then when you hold your brush on top of your excess water back there, when you hold your brush on top of your paper towel and you're pressing down to get the water out, if you see any color there, it's usually left by right by where the ferrule touches. If you see any color, then you want to go through that again and keep repeating until you see no color. And that's what helps keep your brushes clean and you don't have to spend too much time at the end of your painting session cleaning them out. Okay, now for drying this side, you're going to take a blow dryer on low and keep it about a foot away from your rock. You don't want it on high because that might be too hot and it can cook the paint and the paint can shrink and shrivel up. So you just want to be patient. And then once that side's dry, it sh you'll know because it won't feel sticky or tacky because as it starts drying you'll feel it and you'll see the paint's not coming off on your hand great but you might touch it it might still feel kind of cold or kind of tacky when you press your hand into it so you want to keep blow drying past that point and then you're ready to flip them over and knock out the other side but with the magic of let's paint tv Here's what your rock will look like when you're done. So you've got both sides nice and shiny. This guy's got five coats on him. Uh, I especially did five coats because he's going outside. So the more coats you put on, the more protected he is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you with the Sharpie <clears throat> how you can draw your fish pattern directly onto your rock. Now I've drawn this fish pattern many times, so it's not just the, this is the first time I'm drawing it, so I'm very familiar with it. So with a little bit of practice, you can do this too. So I like to get like a nice little rounded nose and then I think of his body being kind of fat down here and then coming up to his little tail curving and then same with the top but I'm going to leave some room up here for his top fin so I don't want to come too high. I'm going to come back in here so you can see it's narrower here. And then I'm going to draw my tail. So my tail's got two longer ones, a longer one here, and a longer one here, and then I did three bumps, boop, boop, boop. Now you can make your tail any way you like it. This is just what, this is just what I did. 
And then for your top fin, it's going to start well, right back here, and you're going to go one. Let me see if I can get in there a little better. One, two, three little rounded bumps. And then three spiky ones. Spiky, 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 and then back down to the back of the fish. Then we can do the bottom fin. So the bottom fin starts about the same area as the top fin. So I can give myself a little mark there. And he's going to have a couple little bumps too. One, two, three. And then he's going to have one that kind of has a nice little S. It's a little bit longer and comes out like that. Now, I'm going to show you this on paper as well. So I'll be repeating how to draw this pattern. Then you're going to give him a little eye. And then we need to make the openings. Because you'll notice I have this opening here. And I've got another opening here, here, and here. So that's what we're going to create now. So I'm going to leave some space from the, the my outside line. And I'm just going to run parallel to the outer edge. Back up, not too close to the eye. I want to leave some of that gold between the eye and the line. Then my next little section going to be a little more pointy on the bottom and then comes up almost like an exclamation mark that's curved and then I'm going to have another guy in the middle who's a little more wiggly he comes in a little narrower here narrower and then a little loop at the bottom narrow in the middle and back out almost like a little fish too and then one more guy on the end here And then that little guy on the end there, he's going to have, it's optional if you want to put another little one in there. Another little guy inside that line. And that would become this little guy here. Alright. So... I'm going to show you now how to draw that on paper. Because it's, it's okay if you're not comfortable drawing it right onto your piece. I would say 95% of people would not be. But if you do have some experience with painting and drawing, then you might be. So then you can. So this is another way that we do patterns and patterns with uh, painting. Is we get our pattern traced and drawn onto a piece of trans clear transparency. And then you use this to transfer these lines onto your surface, whether it's a fish or I use it on the man, on the mandala carafe. Now, when you're on the paper, you can just use a pencil. Now, my small fish, he's about three and a half inches long, so I gave myself two little marks here. This is three and a half inches. This length here, three and a half inches. So I know I want my little nose to be inside that. I'm leaving room at the bottom for my fins. And then back here I want to come in thinner. And then curving out for that tail. And then one, two, three. Now if you notice, my lines don't perfectly line up there at the back. That's okay. This is just the first drawing and then you can, you know, refine it and make it you know, tidy it up a bit. And then one, two, three little bumps up the top there. And then one, two, three spiky ones and back down to your fish. Fish's body. And remember, it doesn't have to look exactly like this. This is just what was in my head. And then the bottom fish, or bottom fin. Something like that. And then if you like, you can put like a couple little extra little guys in here, little extra back fins if you want. I think that would look nice. So now I can refine the shape. And so by that, I mean I come in with my pencil and I just make things a little smoother. If I want my nose a little bit rounder, I can do that. I can bring out the, the shape a little bit more. So you just have to get started with your drawing and then you can come back in and redefine it and tweak it make some areas bigger or smaller 
I can make these little rounded bumps a little bit bigger. And then back up here, maybe make this gunky guy a little bit wider so I have more room to play with my mandala. -ing. And then you can come in with a thicker Sharpie marker and go over your final design. Yeah, the fish are cool. I want to do a dolphin. I've been planning a dolphin mandala, so you can watch for that one. I just love the mandaling. It's so relaxing. So there, you've got your basic fish shape. You don't need to, to sharpie over this line for the top of the body, or these little belly lines, because we don't really need those. Those are just to help guide us when we're first drawing our pattern. Now I can put in his eyeball. You can use a pencil too. Like I said, I'm pretty familiar with drawing this because I've drawn it out quite a number of times. So with practice, you too will be able to just draw it from memory. And that little guy in the middle. So when you're doing, so here's my little guy here. That's all my transparency. So then you could take the time to draw a big guy. Um, here, I'll hold these up for you, so you can do a little snapshot, a little freeze frame and take a picture. There you can get a picture of him. There you can get a little picture of him. In the pattern packet, uh, you'll get pictures of these guys. Now the large fish, just for reference, he's about six and a half inches. So about six and a half inches. The little guy, he was about three and a half inches. But if you have a larger rock, you could do a larger fish. If you have a smaller rock, you could do a smaller fish. Now, how do you get these onto a clear transparency? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. <laughs> so you're going to take your transparency, and you're going to tape down one side. And so I've got my pattern under. I've got my pattern underneath my transparency. And now I go on top of the transparency and I go over the fish design I've created. And you would do the inside lines as well. So then you'd have your pattern on your transparency. Then I like to trim them out so then you end up with a little guy like this. Then you would take your rock, you'd hold them down on your rock, figure out where you want them, take your tape, tape down one side, and then you take a piece of graphite paper. Um, this is gray slash black graphite paper. One side has graphite on it, and graphite is just what your pencils are made from, and then the other side has nothing. So if you're wondering which side has the graphite, you can always take one of your stylus tools the stylus has the wooden handle with the metal ends that have little round balls on them. For this um, class, we're using this set of three, which we'll be talking about later. But you can take a stylus tool and then draw it on top of something. Like Take your stylus, go on top of your graphite paper, and see if you get a line. If you don't get a line, you know you have the wrong side of the graphite down, so you just flip it over. So you take your fish, either hold it in place or tape your fish down, slide your graphite underneath and then with your stylus tool you just go over these lines. Sometimes you do a little bit of back and forth because the transparency is a little bit on the thick side. So just keep lifting it up and checking it. And if this happens to come off, because the transparency is clear, it's really easy for you to come back and line it up and then keep going. Yeah, and then you've got your little rock with your fish design that looks something like this. Alright. Oh, also, my latest favorite tool, electric erasers. Oh my gosh, I love them. Just throwing that out there. Thank you, Santa Claus. And as far as tape goes, too, I should mention that I like to use Scotch Magic Tape. It has like a plaid design on it. I took out the paper, but it's usually like a plaid design. Scotch Magic Tape. 
because it doesn't leave a residue and it will not remove your paint when you're using it over freshly painted surfaces. Of course, you can always go to painter's tapes. The painter's tapes work great as well. So now that you have your fish design on your rock, we want to base coat him in so that he has a black body, but you can still see those little openings. So let's try that. We're going to use the DecoArt Multi-Surface Satin Black Tie. And we're going to use a little plastic lid. This is all dry now, so I could put this right on top of it if I wanted to, or in this case I'm just going to go right beside it and just take out maybe the size of a dime. It goes a long way, so you don't need much. Then we're going to be using a filbert brush. I'm going to show you what that looks like close up. Filbert brushes have a rounded chisel edge, and when I say chisel edge, that's what you call the tips of the bristles. That's your chisel edge. So they're kind of rounded. So some brush companies call them cat's tongues, and some brush companies call them filbert brushes. But they're great for base coating and rounded surfaces, like our little fishy. So I'm going to just dip into my paint and load, just push back and forth on both sides so it's kind of blobby. Yes, those of you that paint with me, I don't usually load like this, but for these fish I do. Because I like to get a nice thick edge on them. Come in closer if you can see that. So it's kind of blobby. And the reason I do that is so that as I paint the, the edge on the fish, I push that paint and I get a nice thick line on the edge. So it's pretty much solid with my first coat. And the reason I do that is it makes it easier then when I come back to do the next coats. Because my edge is nice and solid. Just gotta switch up my glasses here so I can see what I'm doing. So because you're using thick paint, you'll have a lot of thick paint left to the middle of the area that you're base coating. So you just take your brush and you just flatten that around. Leave it at your edge, but flatten around the stuff anywhere else. As this paint dries, it self-levels pretty nicely. And by self-level, I mean the paint will smooth out and go a little bit flatter and smoother on its own. Now at the back here, I want to see three little bumps. So I can come back and make sure those guys are in there. Like one, two, three. Okay, that looks better. And then I can continue down his belly. So again, I'm trying to put it on quite thick at the edge. There's a good one. And then I'm going to spread it around after I get this filled in a little more. With the first coat of paint, I try and get into all the little nooks and crannies of the rock. So even when you're doing this detailed base coating, it's really relaxing. It's nice to do a few rocks at a time too, so then while one's drying you can work on another one. Then before the paint starts coming up my, my bristles too high and getting too close to my ferrule, what I want to do is just wipe it off on my paper towel. And then I'll show you how, to use the, how I like to use the brush tubs. So inside the brush tub you've got three different little areas. You've got one, two, three wells. This one's got rails in it. This one's got little resting arms so that you can rest your brush in there if you have to go and do something else quickly. But don't leave your brushes resting in water too long because it'll wear the varnish off the ferrule and the, then the ferrule, or yeah, it'll wear the varnish off the handle and then your ferrule can start loosening up and falling off. So what I do is go into one of these little wells over here and what I'm doing in the bottom is tap tap tapping and turning my brush all the way around to get all the edges of this lower part of the ferrule and pushing that water up the ferrule. And then I go over to the other side do the same thing and then these little rails here you want to get your brush down low enough so the ferrule makes this kind of like a mallard duck sound 
and that's going to be vibrating your ferrule and help to get any other paint out. I just do one direction so that it doesn't damage the bristles. Then when you hold your brush on a piece of paper towel, check and see if there's any color where your ferrule's touching the paper towel. If there's color touching there, then I'll, I'll repeat that until there's no color. So I've got no color, so that's great. Now I can continue on with my little fish. So I'll wash my brush out probably every couple of minutes so the paint doesn't get too built up in it. Because I like to keep my brushes lasting as long as possible. So I like to look after them as best I can. So I just paint right on top of those Sharpie marks. And then in the middle, I just smooth out any thicker paint. So you can see the first coat looks very patchy. You can still see lots of the gold coming through. That is totally normal, and that's the way it rolls. But you'll find with your second coat, it'll be less patchy. Your third coat will be even less patchy. And then by the time you get to your fourth coat, you'll probably more so just be putting a little bit here and there where you can still see a little bit of the gold coming through. If an area already looks nice and solid in black, then you don't have to go over it again. And then before I wash out my brush, I can just empty it out here up on the top fin where I can use some color. And then I'll wash out my brush again. So again, before I wash it off, I'll just wipe it out. And I just wipe off in one direction. I refrain from going back and forth like this because it really wears your brush out a lot faster. So either just pull in one direction or just pinch your brush out. And then the same little regime in here. Turning my brush around so it's gently hitting the bottom on an angle. So not straight up and down. That'll splay your brushes. But just on an angle. And then over on the other side. So that also helps to keep all my dirty water on this side in these two wells. So then I don't have to keep uh, taking and getting new clean water in my brush tub as often. Whereas you can see in the brush basin, it's already full of gold already. So if you don't have a brush tub and you can't get one, then you can always go with two or three basins for cleaning your brush out in. But working up to the brush tubs is really great because it's these little rails. These guys are the gold. They really help uh, keep the paint out of your brush and, and out of your ferrule. If you can't find them, let me know. All the stuff I'm using today I can get a hold of for you and I can send to you. Okay, so once you keep going on that guy, you're going to end up with a little fishy that looks like this. Hello, little fishy. So, we're going to be ready for mandala. Now, for the mandala tools, these are, this is my favorite set. It's a set of three wooden-handled 